Well, how the heck are you? So if you're paying attention, you may notice from the opening shot I've got three beers here. So I'm going to do this video over three particular beers for a specific reason. All three I got uh, marked down at the Brown Derby Wine Center. This one regularly went for $5.49. They had it marked down to $1.99. This is the Big Muddy. Big Muddy's out of Murfreesboro, Illinois. They're Pale Ale, 6%, 38 IBUs. You know, I am one of the very few craft beer guys that have the audacity to complain about beer price. I, you know, listen, buy what you like, buy what you can afford, but there's nothing wrong with a bargain either. Uh, again, there, I mean, I, I'm just not going to pay five forty nine for a six percent thirty eight IBU beer. I'm not, but a buck and buck ninety nine, I will. So. Does, has it lost anything? Well, I don't know. I don't have the other one to compare side by side. But let's just see if it tastes good as is, shall we? I will tell you that it, it poured foamy as all hell, if that means anything. It's got a nice, uh, nice kind of foamy white head, as you can see. Uh, the, the aromas are still nice. It doesn't feel like a malt bomb, as they say. Uh, this is a pale ale. It's not an IPA, but still. I can definitely get some stone fruit on the nose, as well as some tropical fruit notes. I'm getting some, some mango. I'm also getting some, some peppery-like notes. Tastes like a pale ale to me. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Like I said, I don't have uh, I don't have a fresh specimen right here to drink in front of you uh, to compare them side by side. But I don't think this has lost anything. Fuck. I mean, it was a buck ninety nine. You can't go wrong. I personally think too much is made about dates. I know. Listen, I'm not, I'm not a brewing expert by any means, uh, and I haven't home brewed in a very long time. It's been a handful of years since I have, but when I was doing a lot back in the 90s, uh, mid to late 90s is really when I was brewing a bunch, uh, very frequently, uh, very in <laughs> intensely. Uh, I will tell you that, uh, first I'm going to admit that I never brewed an IPA, but I will tell you that everything I brewed was better the longer it sat in a bottle. Now, I didn't subject it to a constant temperature change or direct sunlight, but there's not a beer that I brewed that wasn't better several months later. Uh, there was a few that I, I tried, you know, years later, and they all became better with age. Now, not every beer style improves with age, but let's be honest, they're not getting worse either. Yeah, I mean, wow, wow, that's nice. Uh, it's got a great finish. It's got a real dry, crisp, clean finish on it that's nice. The flavors are nice. I mean, like I said, I don't have a fresh one here to go side by side with it, but it doesn't, there's nothing wrong with this. It tastes like a pale ale. I mean, it only has 38 IBUs to start with. I mean, it feels like a 38 IBU pale ale. It is not supposed to be intensely hoppy. But there is certainly enough in there still, because I mean, the, the finish is very crisp, clean, and dry. I like Big Muddy. I've had several of their beers. I like them a lot. One of these days, I'll travel down to their brewery. I get close, but I never quite get there. Uh, you know, I get in the St. Louis area. It's not a whole heck of a long way once I get that far, but I just can't seem to get that extra mile. There's a few breweries actually out there out that way that I need to get one of these days, but, you know, we'll keep them on the bucket list, huh? So anyway, I ran longer on this particular one beer because I want to. I'm going to do all three, all three beers on one video. So this time to beer whisper. I'll be back with the next beer. All right, continuing on with my bargain beer series. This one was seven forty nine originally. Now I paid I paid a buck ninety nine, uh, five six I believe is a ABV on it. Uh, Twenty five IBUs, dedicated to farmers. Fermenters and brewers. This uses nine ingredients. I'm not going to read all of them for you, but there is rye and smoked malt in here. Uh, 
and it uses a Weiss and Yeast and free range coastal water. Uh, there are things I like about Rogue. Uh, I like that that you know they do their own thing, they grow their own stuff. That's nice. What I don't like about Rogue is well, they tend to be a little pricey for me. I mean, there is no way in hell I'm ever paying seven forty nine for a beer like this. There's just too much out there to choose from um, for me to pay seven forty nine for twenty two ounces for a 5.6% beer. Uh, it's got a beautiful color though. A brown with ruby tints to it. Uh, first growth Rogan Beer Rye Ale. Dream Rye Independent Hops Dare and Risk Malt. How about that? Uh, they don't call it an IPA. They call it a Rye Ale so I'm, I shouldn't expect it to be intensely hoppy. I tell you the the uh, the aroma is gorgeous. You certainly get a I I I can feel the smoke malt. I certainly could feel the rye. You get slight smoky notes, a little bit of spicy going on, almost some fruity undertones as well. Oh yeah, baby, that's what day like. Uh, <laughs> Wow, <laughs> it's one of those funky glasses my wife found uh, at the Goodwill Outlet in St. Louis when we were there. I don't know what, it's, it's probably not even intended for beer, but I kind of like it. I don't know, it, it just combines a couple different beer styles, like a, a squished, I don't know if it's a squished Pilsner or a, almost like a tulip with a knob on the bottom, who knows, but I like the glass, I just do. Again, I don't just like the other one. I don't have a fresh one to drink side by side to see if it's changed any. I will say it's enjoyable. Uh, yeah, would I have paid seven forty nine for it? No, I don't care how good it is. I'm just not going to. Uh, <laughs> I'm a tight wad. Uh, but then again, I do appreciate what Rogue does. I mean, they do 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 some great beers. I bought a few from time to time. But I'd say at a buck ninety nine, I feel really good about this purchase. <laughs> it was two bucks, man. Uh, I do love Rios. I guess rye seems to be a hit and a miss. I've talked to some guys that know a lot about beer that aren't fan of rye malt for one reason or another. Uh, I am a huge fan. I love the spicy qualities it, it imparts. I think it also uh, adds a richness to the beer. Uh, I think it just adds another dimension altogether. I am a big fan of rye malt. I've talked about this several times. I want to, you know, uh, back in '87, I moved up to Washington State. I was only 22 years old then. Let me show you that beer here. I'm kind of sinking in my chair. I was only 22 years old, and I hadn't had a lot of experience with a lot of different beers at that time. I, I've ha I had a, you know, a handful of imports, other than the typical American fare. I'd also had, you know, of course, I had Guinness at that time, and I'd also had Anchor Steam. But that was my first experience with uh, Red Hook. And they used to make a rye ale. Um, this is called Red Hook Rye. And boy, that beer was just phenomenal. Of course, I mean, you know, that was, that was my, what my taste buds were like at 22. But, uh, I mean, I even even at that age, I could feel that that malt was something special. I wish they'd, they'd revive that beer, bring it back just as it was, because I'd really like to remember it, you know what I mean? Because it was just one of the very first, well, I, we didn't call them craft beers back then, but it was one of the first crafts that I had, and I remember really enjoying that. And I was bummed when they pulled it from the market about a year later or so. So tasting notes, okay, you feel a little bit of that smoke malt, just like I said on the nose. Um, I can certainly feel that rye in there. You get this, I get a little bit of smoke. I get a little bit of that rye. I, I feel some of that malt sweetness. And it may be my taste buds playing tricks on me, but I do feel like I'm getting some dark fruit notes. Uh, I'm not sure if it's typical from a style like this or if I should get fruit notes, but I'll be darned if I'm not. Uh, yeah, I am getting some some almost uh, fig-like notes right there at the end. That's nice. Again, I, I, I don't know if this changed any <laughs> from when it was bottled, but I will tell you it tastes great as is, and it was certainly worth two bucks a bottle. How about that?
Well, how do you do, y'all? This is the last of my, <laughs> my park and beers. Let me put the beer up there so you can see a little bit of it, I guess. And I'm going to read just a touch here. You can see it. I'm going to read just a touch from this bottle here. Uh, Zymaster. A new word coined by Anchor Brewing to describe a brewmaster with hands-on experience throughout the A to Z process of creating a new beer from the research and selection of the raw materials and development of a recipe brewing, a recipe to brewing, fermentation, cellaring, and finishing to a unique series of beers from Anchor Brewing rooted in exceptional respect for the ancient art and noble traditions of brewing. So there you go, 7%. It uses uh, the, uh, the Potrero, it's a number seven of the Potrero Hill Sour Mash. They use the Potrero Hill Whiskey. Potrero Whiskey, or Potrero, I guess, is the whiskey. 7%. Uh, the website just says uh, the mash is sour, not the beer. This is one of the the only one of the three. This one regularly for seven forty nine at Brown Derby. I pay two ninety nine. I did pay full price for this one when it first came out a while back. Um, I think I just came into some money for something. I got a bonus or something. I was feeling good about myself. Went ahead and paid full retail. Um, I think I paid six ninety nine at another store, but I don't remember who can who can remember that far back. But I, I do remember some of my notes at the time, though. I do remember thinking. That if you're able to take this beer on its own merits, and, and what I mean by that is forget that it says IPA on the label. I think you're going to like it. It's put together well. The notes were perfect. But I think those that were expecting an IPA were going to be disappointed because it didn't have that great big, you know, uh, bitterness or hoppiness that most Americans or most craft beer drinkers, wherever you are, have become accustomed to. Um, where was I going with that? <laughs> I, I just I remember at the time thinking it didn't uh, it just didn't have that big punch at the end. But I remember really enjoying it. They don't give the IBUs. It uses Nelson Sauvignon hops. Uh, the aroma is just gorgeous. Uh, much what I remember. I don't know if it feels any different. You you certainly can smell some sour mash like notes. I get some of those those um, tropical fruit notes, those tropical notes that you get from a Nelson Sauvignon hop. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, listen, there are people that are afraid to buy beers like this because they, they think they're going to change too much. I don't know. You know, I mean, it was three, you know, this one was three, the other two were two bucks a piece, so I paid seven bucks for all three beers. I mean, are you really going to go wrong even if they have evolved? Even if they have become hot bombs or, or malt bombs? Even, even if, are they still drinkable? Can you accept them on their own merits? And I think that's a lot that I feel that, that many beer geeks seem to lose. Well, is it still good? Forget what it used to taste like. What does it taste like now? Is it still a good beer? Forget what it says on the label. Can you still enjoy it for what it is? That's the question for me. And in the case of all three of these beers, the answer is yes. I can enjoy them all for what they have become, if they have changed any. Again, this is only one of the three that I had before. <laughs> but from my recollection, it doesn't feel any different. Oh, it's still got, I mean, it's not intensely hoppy, but you do have that snap at the end. That's what I remember about it. It had a nice snap at the end, but it didn't really feel like an IPA. And it still doesn't. It didn't evolve into an IPA. It is an IPA in a sense. Well, I mean, how do I say this right? Um, I think we've become, become accustomed to a certain taste or a feel of what an American craft IPA should be rather than what it was originally meant as. So if I'm looking at this in the traditional sense of an IPA, yes, it feels like an IPA. Is it as intensely bitter as most American craft IPAs have become? No. But it, it does have, that, that again, that pleasant snap, that, that beautiful hoppiness crisp finish at the end that makes it nice you can feel the sour mash i think a lot of it is does a beer live up to its expectations 
Does it do what it says on the label? Does it do what it says on the website? In the case of this beer, in the case of all three of them that I, I paid seven bucks for, all three beers, yes, they all live up to their expectations for me. This is Tom the Beer Whisperer. I'll see you later. And, you know, it, it, use your common sense. But for me, you know, I, I, I'm not afraid to buy beers marked now.